Shalom, everyone. Let me get myself cozy. This is the area that I love to hang out and kind of study the Word of God and kind of study some of my study tools. It's just one of the areas that I like to make a mess in. Um, but I thought today maybe I'd hang out here with you just as if you were in my home and uh, we were having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. My favorite thing, I do absolutely love to sew. I'm passionate about sewing and I'm passionate about fashion and bridal. This time of year, I'm probably even more passionate about gardening because I'm kind of tired of sewing and it's a great season. But what I'm even more passionate about is sitting here and having time with God and really digging in. I grew up in the church and so I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew everything back and forward um, from the Bible. And what I came to find out in my adult life is that some of the stuff I knew and learned was traditional and not biblical. And so I have been on a journey for the last maybe three or four years of really deeply studying the Word of God and finding out what the truth is. I'm going to the source. And that's what's so important that we don't rely on what others tell us, what the church tells us, what our parents tell us. Um, we don't, you know, we can't get everything secondhand. We need to go right to the source. And so today is Friday. It's the day we normally will study the Bible together. We're walking through the Gospels. And even though the lighting is not great here for videoing, and probably the sound isn't great here for videoing, I just thought I'd bring you into my happy mess. <laughs> so let's go ahead and grab um, our Bibles. And then I wanted to chit chat with you. Um, we are going to be, and let me put it on the screen, the beheading of John the Baptist. And so we'll be in Matthew 14, 1 through 12. We'll be in Mark uh, 6, 14 through 29. I think that's the one we're going to read if you want to leave one open. Uh, Luke 3, 19 and 20 and Luke 9, 7 through 9. So if you want to grab your Bible and a cup of tea, and maybe you just want to grab a blankie and maybe an animal to cuddle up with, which I'm sure I'll get one here in a minute. They've been kind of hovering around me as I'm cuddling. Uh, and I'll be right back. hotter than I thought. Okay, I think we're going to read the Mark uh, account in chapter 6, 14 through 29 about John the Baptist beheaded. Um, but first I wanted to share some of the little things that are here on these side tables. All this is is kind of one of those, um, what do you call them? The TV trays. <laughs> And I try to pack them all away when we have people coming and try to keep this area clean. But the last two weeks, I haven't had time to clean. So this is what it is. It's been sitting out here. I need to clean it up. We have family coming in from out of town. Um, but on here, here's some of my favorites. Is This is the Archaeological Archaeology Study Bible. And... It is the English Standard Version, and I don't know who it's by, Crossway. And I love it because in the midst, it doesn't have it for our passage today. So let me see if I can find. It will have different archaeological digs and finds. Actually, I think one of them, the other book has it, but... And it will tell you what's going on in history. Um, it will, the daily life of a Palestine. 
Judean Palestine in the New Testament times. And it really opens up um, maybe some of that has map, a lot of maps, has a lot of the finds. And then the other one I have, and it seems to be very, it has a lot of archeological stuff in it as well. I actually find more archeological stuff in that one. This is the NIV Biblical Theology Study Bible. And same thing, like here we are, it actually shows you coins from um, Herod Ant Antipas, uh, one of our characters in our story today. That is one of his coins um, that is from that time period. It actually has his name on it, <laughs> which is neat that here we are reading the Bible and you can find uh, archaeological proof of some of the things that are going on here. Um, so you know that, you know, he was, in, Herod Antipas was there. There's a coin even uh, commemorating him. And then another book I'm just now getting into is Josephus. Now, I'm new to this. This was a gift from my hubby. He's so good to me. Um, the problem is, is that our story today Everywhere I look says it's in book 18 of Josephus. Who Josephus was is he's a historian. Um, basically, he wrote history books for the Jews. And he has a whole series of history books about the wars going on and, and the things going on in, um, in uh, Israel in that day. And I realized that this book is only the first four of his books. And they say that um, I was trying to Google it so I could see how to look it up in here. And it says it's in his 18th book. So I think I need to get a few more of those, but that's fun. Something, it's like uh, reading a history novel. And, um, and it's, these are things that really happened. And this is all that was going on around our narrative of the Bible. So behind the scenes, behind what's going on with Jesus and all that we know here, there's this whole history, history of the Roman government, history of um, some of the rulers at the time, the different taxes. Um, there's just a whole series of uh, stories, and they're not stories, it's just a history book um, that he told. And you can actually find parts of what's in your biblical narrative in this book here. And I'm excited to figure out how to find everything in here. Um, but I will, that's new. That's my new little thing here that I don't often have time to do. <laughs> um, but then I just have my regular Bible uh, where I will look up stuff. And this is my life application, which will have some extra uh, tidbits down here at the bottom. And then I also have, of course, we've been doing our chronological study Bible through this. And all this is, is putting it together in a chronological order. And it also gives little snippets of history as we're going through. So these are the things and why I get so excited about just sitting here and hanging out. And I almost wish sometimes I could just cancel my day. Um, some of you probably love to read a good novel and some of you love to do some kind of a craft or something that you absolutely love to do. And then life kind of happens and you have to keep putting that aside. And right now, this is something the last uh, quite a few years, quite maybe three, four years, that I've really gotten into is finding out these characters. And the reason I'm saying that today is because our story today has these characters. You know, who is this Herod? And why is, uh, you know, his wife so upset with uh, John the Baptist? And it's because when we read through Josephus and we read some of this history that's kind of behind the scenes, plus the Bible, we find out that what was really going on. There was a war going on between two countries. There was Herod who marries a... Um, he marries a gal from this other uh, country that they are in war with. And it just so happens that he's still married. He sends off his wife and he marries this other gal 
who's actually also married. And the trick about that is she's married to his half brother. So she divorces her half or his half brother. See, it's like a soap opera. This is what I'm saying. These characters are great. And if you really dig in, you find some really interesting stuff. So she divorces her husband and Herod kind of sends off his other wife, marries this gal who also, here's the kicker, is also, I think, his niece. They're all related. So this is what I'm telling you that the Bible is not boring. <laughs> the Bible is definitely not boring. And when you learn all these little characters, when the Bible gives it, they, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they only had so much space to write all that was going on. So they had to choose some of Jesus's miracles and some of his preaching. They had to choose some of the things that were going on, but it's so rich. If you can read between the lines and you know what's going on politically and what's going on historically, what's going on in the country of different things, um, it just opens it all up. And sorry to take so much time doing that, but I promise you that I'm just so excited. I want to teach people to dig into the word of God because number one, your peace is found in here and there's formulas for peace. Number two, it gives you life examples um, of how you could make better decisions and how you can, you know, do this or that. And number three, it tells you how not to do things. You know, you can use these examples for inspiration or um, for warning not to do things the way they did. So let's go ahead and read our, our uh, chapter in Mark, Mark 6, 14 through 29. Um, King Herod, now, now you know a little bit behind the scenes, heard about this for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. The Bible, it just goes straight to um, King Herod heard about this. So Jesus had been doing all of these miracles and he raised a girl from the dead. And so it's getting all the way to the courts. Jesus has kind of become a little famous. Now, this is gonna give you now a forward and then a backstory. So what this is saying is, is that Herod is a little bit worried about all of these, um, these miracles that Jesus is doing. And he's like, he's feeling guilty because he actually murdered uh, John the Baptist. Now we're gonna find out how he did it. Uh, some were saying John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. And that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others say he is Elijah. Now, there's a whole other study. We're, we're not going to get into half the things you can study. You could just study this passage. You could go back into the Old Testament. You can find out um, the prophecies that said that John the Baptist or said that a, an Elijah type person would come. Elijah would come. So others say he is Elijah. And they're saying that of Jesus, but really John the Baptist was the Elijah type person. And still others claimed he is a prophet like one of the prophets long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded has been raised from the dead. He's like, oh no, John has been raised from the dead. He's come back to haunt me. <laughs> and now we're gonna tell the story of how he put him to death for Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married, for John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias, that's her, nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. So she's living the good life with Herod here and maybe she didn't like her first husband. And this is kind of her uncle as well. It's just a whole weird thing. So um, now 
uh, John the Baptist is telling her, telling him and her, you guys are sinning and you are not um, doing what God wants you to do. Now, here's another little thing. They worked kind of for the Roman government, but they were Jewish kind of king and queen. They were ruling as Jews, so they were part Jew, but they were kind of working for the enemy. They were working for Rome. So they were like the bad guy leading the Jews and supposed to be for the Jews, but not for the Jews. Like I said, if you dig into the history of this, you are gonna have the best story. Who cares about any other novel? Who cares about any soap opera or any great movie? This is a great movie <laughs> and it's real. Um, but she was not able to, so she, Herodias, which is his wife, um, wanted to kill uh, John the Baptist, but Herod actually stopped her from killing him because he kind of liked John the Baptist. Because Herod feared, and he feared uh, John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled and he liked to listen to him. So he wasn't willing to change his behavior when John would say repent and John would say stuff, but he liked to listen to him. It's not strange. Um, finally, the opportuni to, opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and her dinner guests. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I will give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried to the king with the request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but he, but because of his oath and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in, in prison and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. So much going on in this little tiny passage. So much behind the scenes. We have Jesus who's healing and teaching and that's going on. Uh, earlier in another video and earlier in our, in our uh, study, we learned that um, John the Baptist was in prison and actually kind of questioning Jesus. Are you sure you're the one? Am I, am I in here in prison for nothing? Um, and now he's been beheaded. He's gone to his death for speaking what was right. Um, and we have a whole situation of Herod who kind of liked John the Baptist, knew he was a righteous man, knew that the right thing was not to kill him but he kind of let peer pressure and what other people thought of him direct him. He didn't want to, he had made an oath to um, Herodias's daughter and he didn't want to go back on his word in front of all these people. So he cared more about what people thought and then what God thought, because God would have number one said murder is wrong. And number two, this is God's chosen person, you know, person, John the Baptist, and he killed him. So he chose to sin rather than to let people down. There's a huge lesson in that. There's so many lessons in this, guys. We can learn from him um, that John the Baptist, as we studied before, he didn't care what people thought. He was so focused on God and God's purpose for his life. Um, that he didn't care if he dressed funny, if he was giving messages that nobody liked. God used him and turned people's lives around and he was used to announce the arrival of the Messiah. 
He was prophesied in the Old Testament. He lived in a time um, that it was just amazing. And he's really worth studying. I don't have time in this video to go through all the different things about John the Baptist. I would love to hear in the comments what you know about John the Baptist. What's your favorite parts about John the Baptist? What lessons have you learned from him? What do you carry on? Um, you know, for me, I think it's really focusing on my purpose and not letting the world around me or whether I don't have to worry about people putting me in prison uh, for, you know, speaking the truth. But if they did, I need to focus on God's purpose and just keep moving forward and say, hey, I know it's not popular, but this is right and this is wrong. And I need to speak truth, you know, into that. Um, also, other things I learned from him, um, he was the ultimate in obeying God. He heard the call for his life. God told him what to do, go out and, you know, tell everyone to repent, uh, pave the way for the Messiah, and uh, he obeyed. Regardless, it took him to his death. Um, so he's just a really good um, study, and you can study about the Nazarite vow that he took. Um, you can study about Gabriel uh, announced his birth along with um, announcing Jesus's birth. So, you know, there's just some really good stuff to study. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys are studying um, and what you found in, in that study. I'm going to keep this short and sweet so that you guys can get on with your day. And I'm going to sit here and continue to study. I want to dig in a little bit farther. I want to figure out how to read this book, <laughs> Josephus, and see if maybe I need to go buy the other books. Um, if he's got some other ones too, this one does say he has four, but anyway, I'm going to finish drinking my tea and, uh, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Hope you have a wonderful weekend and happy Friday. And shalom, my dear friends. We'll see you in the next video.